Hello and welcome back to another The First Rule of Kumite is Everyone Talks About Kumite episode of the First Time Watchers podcast. Because we're going to the Kumite. Oh no, because we like to watch the Kumite. Now, my name is Tim Costa. I'm Hermano De Silva. And this is Walter Vinci. And if you'd like to send feedback, you can always email us at firsttimewatchers at gmail.com. Speaking of feedback... Um, so remember last week we talked about uh, Repo, the genetic opera, because it was assigned to us by our latest Patreon donor. Yep. And uh, James, who uh, is that Patreon donor, uh, replied to us saying, uh, I'm so happy you guys did this movie, even though you guys didn't really care for it. One note is that you guys mentioned that uh, Sorvino can really sing. Well, he's a classically trained opera singer, and he performed in opera companies all over the world before transitioning to film. Uh, well, first off, James, I just want to say that I did like the movie. I, I, I cared for it very much. I thought it was uh, very entertaining. Uh, don't don't take these two assholes uh, uh, to heart that much. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I would be a contrarian at times. <laughs> no, not I you. Have, I've been accused. I've been accused of. of me. Uh huh. Right. 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 Uh, so yeah. Anyways. Uh, yeah, Hermano, you had mentioned that you, you, you were pretty impressed with uh, Sorvino's uh, singing chops there. Yeah, I, I actually did know his history outside of acting, so yeah, that was uh, that was uh, definitely a, a revelation. Yeah, so uh, once again, thank you, James, for assigning that to us and also be, uh, being a, a donor. And uh, if anybody else uh, you know wants to assign movies to us, you can uh, hop on over to our Patreon page at patreon.com slash firsttimewatchers and... Uh, and maybe uh, after a few bucks, you can uh, assign something uh, equally as frustrating for Wally and Hermano. That's something hopefully <laughs> I, I will enjoy. <laughs> well, moving on. In this episode, we continue our second time watcher series to discuss a film from Hermano's childhood, Bloodsport. But before we get into that, it is time for Yay or Nay. Yay! Uh, this is the part of the show where we discuss what we have uh, seen uh, on our own. And uh, Hermano, I'll let you go first. All right, watched a few things. Um, first up from 1980, Return to the 36th Chamber. Yes! Um, hadn't seen this in quite a while. I think I've only seen the first two. I haven't seen the third one. Um, but this one, uh, I'll read the synopsis here. When thugs prey upon innocent factory workers, a small-time scammer trains for revenge by studying the moves of Shaolin Temple monks. Um so it'd been, like I said, it'd been quite a while. I saw this in the '90s, I think. It stars uh, a bunch of this. I'm gonna go by his, the other name. He goes by Gordon Liu. <laughs> yeah, so he plays a con artist in this film. Um, he, uh, him, and his uh, his brother and his factory worker friends are getting bullied by the owner and some thugs to take a reduced pay. Um, Gordon Liu decides that he's going to pretend to be a, a powerful Shaolin monk to try to like strong arm them into paying them their normal wage. But of course he gets discovered as a, a fraud. And then he decides to really go and try to infiltrate a Shaolin monk uh, temple to learn the ways of a Shaolin monk. And, you know, it's very comedic, very kind of more on the Jackie Chan side of things where it's, you know, a lot of kind of action comedy. Uh, and it, to be honest, it's it's pretty light on the action overall. Like there's a big set piece towards the end, that's pretty uh, pretty cool. But um, you know, if you're a fan of the Jackie Chan films, if you haven't seen any of the the, the 36 Chamber uh, series of films, I would certainly recommend it. Gordon Liu uh, in the film is really really good. I can see why you know Quentin Tarantino uh, picked him up for um, the Kill Bill film. So that's a yay for that. Um, it was really bugging me. I, I think I talked to Tim about this. I don't know if Wally. Uh, heard any of this but like it was really kind of bugging me that i couldn't really remember the original wicker man because mm. the nicholas cage one had kind of overwritten my memories of that movie yes. uh because that one was so more recent obviously the remake and you know nicholas cage really kind of brought it in that film uh so i decided to rewatch the original the wicker man from 1973 uh puritan police sergeant arrives in a scottish island village in search of a missing girl who the locals claim never existed so if you've seen the Nicolas Cage one, it pretty much follows the same script for the most part. 
of course, being set in the 70s, it has a different flair to it, a different feel, very kind of of its time, a lot of like kind of, it's weird because a lot of the pagan slash hippie um, sensibilities in it just kind of go together really well. <laughs> they just seem like they're almost like they're one in the same, this kind of like laissez-faire attitude about everything kind of just works in the film. Um, the, the one thing this film has going for it, the original, the 73 version, is that it definitely uh, focuses on the religion, religious aspect of the uh, police sergeant who's investigating the missing girl. Like, he's completely bewildered by, like, everyone in this village right. uh, not, you know, subscribing to Christianity and, you know, just kind of being wild and free uh, about everything. And he just is, like, totally, like, culture shock uh, and, and stuff like that. So... Um, it, it, you know, in, in the Nicolas Cage one, it's not really, that's not really the focus. It's a little bit different. Um, so yeah, I still love Christopher Lee in it. You know, he's definitely a selling point for the film. It's, it's wild, man. It's a really wild film. So <laughs> I, I'd recommend it EA overall for Wicked Man. And then I saw something from last year and I got this, this is our family movie, um, uh, family night movie for the week. Uh, caught it on Apple TV plus, which apparently I still have and I forgot I had it. <laughs> I watched Wolf Walkers. Oh, good one. Yeah. Have you seen it, Tim? I have. Yeah, I loved it, man. I thought it was really good. <laughs> like, I'm kind of rooting for it now to win uh, the animation Oscar. Um, yeah, it's not going to happen, though, unfortunately. Uh, I don't know, man. I'm, I, I, to me, it's my favorite. I, I know Soul is probably the front runner, maybe even Inside Out, not Inside Out, um, Onward or whatever. Mm. It's probably going to be Soul. But... So, yeah, it's probably going to be Soul. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm really pulling for Wolf Walkers, even though it's probably a long shot, but, um, a young apprentice hunter and her father journey to Ireland to help wipe out the last wolf pack. But everything changes when she befriends a free spirited girl from a mysterious tribe rumored to transform into wolves. Um, yeah, I mean, I absolutely love the story. I love the animation. The animation is really unique. It's kind of a blend of like illustration and like watercolor and, just really vibrant, like mm -hmm. really unique uh, score to it as well. You know, the story is great. Oh, yeah, score. Obviously. The score is really, really good. Yeah. And honestly, like I was kind of on the fence about showing this to my kids. My youngest kid could could hardly care. <laughs> like he's just like, whatever. I don't know what this is. This isn't a known property to me. This isn't Peppa Pig. <laughs> uh, but my oldest son really got into it, which really, you know, made me feel good because I, I was really um, – wasn't sure like because you know they are kind of really picky about what we watch you know it's it's a lot of disney stuff is really easy because it's bright and they know what it is and you know they've heard of these they've seen commercials for it or you know ads or whatever like this i you know i was i wasn't sure and and he came away loving it he's already seen it like three times since like friday so um yeah i mean highest cvas for this i mean a lot of good voice uh work too and um just really, like I said, really, really pulling for it to win the animation Oscar, though it's probably a long shot, but highest DVAs for Wolf Walkers. Wally, what have you seen recently? All right, so we're going to go, uh, we'll start with the movie that I initially confused this movie with, and I kept, even while watching it, I was like, is this the movie that this happens in? Nope. No. Yes? No. Is it? No, because I, uh, for some reason, always transpose uh, Bloodsport with 1989's Kickboxer. <laughs> Kurt Sloan must learn the ancient kickboxing art of Muay Thai in order to revenge his brother. Uh, directed by Mark DeSalle and David Warth. Uh, starring our boy Jean-Claude Van Damme. Uh, this movie is, you know, it came out like shortly after Bloodsport did. And so like, I think that's why I have these two confused. But I, the, the scene I kept thinking of over and over again while I was watching Bloodsport was, when are they going to roll their hands in like glue and put the glass on them? Hmm. And then I realized that that's not this movie. <laughs> it's the other movie. I went, on, I went on a little bit of a, a bender with this sort of stuff. Uh, but this is EA. I mean, I'm not watching Jean-Claude Van Damme movies for uh, the acting. I'm not watching them for, you know, subplot. I'm not watching them for theme. I am watching them because I want to watch Jean-Claude Van Damme kick people in the face I, I have, and do splits. I have not seen this movie. Uh, and You should. I, I'm sure. I, you know, I, I believe you that I should. And uh, However, I think I'm familiar with a very famous gif of him dancing in the, from this movie. Yes. <laughs> That is, that is, I, I was, initially when I was looking for Jean-Claude Van Damme, I guess when I was tweeting about uh, watching Bloodsport, um, that's where all that came, that, that pretty, practically all that came up. Um, <laughs> but yes, this is, this is a yay. Like, you know, I, I want to see kicks to the face. I want to see spinning kicks. I want to see jumping kicks. I want to see split kicks. And you know what? I got them all. 
So Kickboxers EA. Uh, then we're going to go to uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme, the actor. Because he has to play two roles, two different roles in this movie from 1991. Directed by, directed by Sheldon Ludditch. Double impact. Twin brothers are separated when their parents are murdered. But 25 years later, they reunite in order to avenge their parents' death. And once again, well, we also get to see the return of uh, everyone's favorite uh, the villain. And I'll talk about him later. Bolo Young in this movie as Moon, you know, the enforcer. But seeing, you know, Jean-Claude Van Damme is a you know, a good brother and a bad brother. Um, pretty cool, you know, because, it, again, I'm not looking for uh, Golden Globes or or Oscar-worthy acting. I want kicks. And guess what I got out of this? Bunch of kicks. <laughs> uh, so, again, that is a yay. And then, speaking of gifts, Tim, um, we're going to go to the to the last one, and, and probably my favorite of the bunch, uh, because it's also directed by John Woo. Uh, and that is Hard Target. <laughs> A woman hires a drifter as her guide through New Orleans in search of her missing father. In the process, they discover a deadly game of cat and mouse behind his disappearance. You come for Jean-Claude Van Damme's mullet. You stay for him killing the snake. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> um, and so, yes, this is obviously a, a 1993 movie, by the way. Uh, this is a yay. Um, I think this is probably my favorite of the uh, the ones that I that I watched up to, up to Bloodsport. Um, just because, I mean, it is John Woo and he, he's got that you know, kind of flair to it. And I, I definitely enjoy John Woo movies. So uh, this is also a yay. Nice. Uh, just one thing for me, and that is from last year. I think it made it uh, to, to some theaters or something like that uh, at the end of the year for some sort of qualifying. And that is uh, News of the World. Uh, starring Tom Hanks uh, and directed by Paul Greengrass. If I did not know ahead of time this was directed by Paul Greengrass while watching this, I would have never had any clue uh, that it was a Paul Greengrass film because uh, there's not really much shaking cam to go on, to be honest with you. So a Civil War veteran agrees to deliver a girl taken by the Kiowa people years ago to her aunt and uncle against her will. They travel hundreds of miles and face grave dangers as they search for a place that either can call home. Um, I don't know. Th this movie is okay. It's not as good uh, as I guess I hoped or expected, considering the director and uh, the actor. However, it, look, it's impossible for Tom Hanks to ever be bad, to ever play down to films of lower quality uh, or like a film that tries to kind of play above what they actually are, which this film kind of kind of does. Um, you know, it, it, it it tries to be relevant, uh, like a, a parable for today's political climate. Uh, uh, but there really isn't that much meat on the bones when you break it down beyond its its story and just this core relationship between uh, Hanks and, uh, and this young girl. Uh, honestly, this m movie reminded me of True Grit, which is much better, the Coen Brothers' True Grit, uh, which is much better uh, version of this kind of story because in both movies, there's a lot of, you know, grimy side characters and beautiful vistas. And uh, I will say, you know, News of the World has received uh, an Oscar nomination for a cinematography. It's, it's well-earned. It, it's a beautiful, beautiful looking film. Um, there's some great images, uh, both, uh, outside and inside. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, like dark rooms with lit by oil lamp and it's just really good to look at. Uh, it, it's just a really nice looking film. And once again, Tom Hanks can never, ever be bad. It's impossible for him to be bad. Uh, so, uh, if you, if you li like Tom Hanks, if you want to watch everything, you could do worse, of course, but uh, you know, of movies that he's been in, but um, it's kind of a meh for news of the world. doesn't make any sense uh maybe no 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 maybe what are you doing well oh uh, hey uh just uh, trying to work out what wally could possibly be doing with all of these pods what pods ah ah, ah. Well, walter wh where have you been here the whole time where else would i be
and the pods. Oh, those pods. Critical error. What the hell? But you know what show will never leave you an error? Huh? Oh, uh, the In Session Film Podcast. That's right, Tim. The In Session Film Podcast is JD and Brendan. Mm, talk about a hard drive. What was that, Tim? What? No, nothing. Nothing. Anyways, each week, the In Session Film Podcast chooses a movie to review. Then creates a top three list based on what they just saw. This week, the In Session Film Podcast is continuing their Michael Mann series with his 1986 film, Manhunter. And their 2021 Oscar predictions. You can find their show on Apple Podcasts by searching for, you guessed it, the In Session Film Podcast. Or on the web at InSessionFilm.com. So if you're looking for more great movie reviews and discussion, then check out the In Session Film Podcast on Apple Podcasts. Or on the web at InSessionFilm.com. So, Wally, what is it with the... I'm sorry, my programming is not allowed to answer that question. Wait, what? I am so confused. It's after dark. This is a second time watchers episode, so that means it's time to play a game we like to call Movie Battle Royale. This is where we use flickchart.com to create our collective top 10 list of all time. We pit of five pairings of movies and decide which one is better with each battle. Are you ready? Let them fight. First up, Gangs of New York versus Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. Two very different sides of the coin. Um, I mean, I do love. All right, I do I, love I'm going to break it down. I'm just, I'm just going to say right now, I'm going to go with Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. I, I am actually going to go because, like, they took a they they really did something clever with that movie, and also it sparked the uh, the reemergence of uh, Doogie Howser. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. You know, like, not expecting to see him in the movie. And um, if you haven't seen it, it's obviously spoilers. But um, <laughs> the movie is an absolute riot. Like, it is, it is, I myself uh, do not partake, but can still get behind the comedy of it. Because mm. I think it's it's that well put together. I agree. I agree. Hermano, what say you? Uh, well, I, was, I was actually going to go opposite you guys. I, I feel like each time I, each subsequent time I've seen uh, Harold and Kumar. I feel like I like it a little bit less each time, hmm. but each time I've you know seen um, Gangs in New York, I feel like I like it a little more each time. And that's starting from a point where I was just kind of ho hum on it the first time I saw it, and it's just grown for me. Like so, I, I, yeah, I was going to vote for Gangs in New York. It is a movie I have to revisit, to be honest with you. Uh, it's been a while since I've seen it, and I was also ho hum when I first saw it. Maybe because I was uh, anticipating it so much at the time. But anyways, Harold and Kumar, it is. Um, next up, Vanilla Sky versus The Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> That's a tough one, but I'm going to have to go with Empire Strikes Back. Um, Vanilla Sky is is great, um, but I I don't think it's nearly as accessible as as Star Wars. Not in the, not in the least. <laughs> That's that's true. What, what say you, Hermano? I'm still in shock that Wally actually picked Star Wars. I feel like he's usually not that high on Star Wars. Um, yeah, I, I'm easily Empire Strikes Back. I, I think I've seen Vanilla Sky maybe once or twice, and I I think I liked it well enough, but, I mean, not nearly as much as I like Empire Strikes Back. I agree. Moving on, uh, Shrek, the first one, versus The Born Supremacy, the second one. Uh, uh, speaking of Paul Greengrass, yeah, it's The Born Supremacy. Come on. Yeah, I, I, yeah, you really can't argue that. But I mean, Shrek also. I mean, it, it's it's got I mean, people. I mean, people adore this movie. I think the the fact that you have a character that's basically called Lord Fuckwad, I think, uh, is worth some merit here. Um, and I, you know, I'm actually going to go with I'm actually going to go with with Shrek on this one because I think that huh. as a standalone kind of uh, take on the on the fairy tale genre, um, I think that. 
I'm looking at these two movies as as separate movies, and the Born Supremacy being the second one is part of a trilogy. Oh boy, okay. And uh, so I'm leaning. I'm going to lean towards Shrek. Okay, uh, uh, Hermano, famously not a fan of the Born films. Yeah, I mean, I like the first one well enough, but honestly, if you hadn't just said it's the second one, I ha- I would have thought it was the fourth one. I have no idea. <laughs> like the series for me is like a total like just melting pot of oh one long ass film. Oh like, boy. you know, they all seem very similar to me. I, I feel like I don't really follow the story but except for the first to, one. To be fair, the second and third one are pretty similar. <laughs> yeah. That's why I'm like, I, I don't know, man. I, I I think I've seen each of those once, to be honest. I, I definitely fell asleep during one of them for about half of it. So yeah, not a huge fan. So I was going to go with Shrek by the fault. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, no, oh, poor, poor Jason Bourne. Shrek it is, I guess. Uh, all right, next up, uh, <laughs> Spaceballs versus A Knight's Tale. I don't think I've seen A Knight's Tale. Oh, oh interesting. Check it out, Wally. It's fun. It, it yes, fun. Not necessarily a list of shame, but it, it's certainly, uh, it's certainly fun and uh, kind of a unique take, especially using modern music. Um, all right, Spaceballs versus As Good as It Gets. And uh, I'm also not the hugest Mel Brooks fan, although I do appreciate Spaceballs. Uh, I'm I'm going with Spaceballs because I think that um, I I think overall I think for I think for a number of people I think Spaceballs is a is a a solid companion piece to the Star Wars trilogy. Oh, okay, uh, I'm gonna go. With it, the- it is. I mean, it's a, it's obviously you know it's a parody, and you know they're they're doing a send up of it. But I think that. You know, when you, with the you know the amount of like you know materials out there for Star Wars and all but that, what, like okay. Spaceballs just becomes more relevant, even though like it's you know decades old at this point. Wally, what do you think is a better film, though? I th- I still think Spaceballs okay. is a better film. I think it's a it's a film that knows exactly what it wants to be. I think as much as I enjoy as good as it gets, um, and I haven't seen it in a while, so maybe this isn't a fair uh, fair assessment. I feel that it is um, trying to do two things at once. And I don't, I don't know if it actually does either of them particularly well. Hmm. Uh, on that note, I am going with as good as it gets. Hermano, be the tiebreaker. <laughs> Sorry, Tim. Wow. <laughs> I'm going to go with Spaceballs wow. on this. Tim, may the Schwartz not be with you then. Okay, fair enough. Uh, finally, we got uh, the usual suspects versus the Boondock Saints. Boondock Saints, baby. No way. I'm go oh, Wally, oh. explain. Yes. <laughs> Boondock Saints is a solid action movie. And if the guy wasn't such a dickhead about it, he probably could have made more good action movies. Please explain how it's even better than The Usual Suspects. Because, I mean, The Usual Suspects, if you go into The Usual Suspects and you know the ending. Okay, first off, don't spoil it. (laughs) I'm not, which is why I'm not spoiling it. Um, But with Boondock Saints, you're you're, going to get, like, some pretty good action scenes. Um, I, and I, that, I, I think that that holds more weight than... I can watch Boondock Saints m- repeatedly. Once, I've seen, once you know the ending of, of The Usual Suspects, ah, you know the ending of The Usual Suspects. Bad logic. Bad logic. Poor logic. I, I, I would have preferred you said like something like, I, I can't support Brian Singer or... Like, or Kevin Spacey. Like, I, I could have maybe understood that, but... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I I definitely not a huge fan, especially after all the stuff that's come out about Brian Singer. But like that film is a classic. It's I've watched it recently, like within the past year, and it holds up, man. I feel like it is consistently good. It never feels like it wears on me, or I, you know, like I I like it less. You know, the more times I've watched it or anything like that, it is solid, solid film. Yeah, usual solid on some cast. Yes, absolutely. Usual suspects. It is. It's it's a classic, despite the people. In front and behind the camera. I'm gonna gather my strength, gonna find my power. Then you know I'm gonna make it right on my own. Tonight, I'll find that in light, I can be strong. On the Simplistic Reviews Podcast, we talk movies. We talk TV. We talk... Hello, Julie, what the heck are you doing? 
trying to make our spot sound more exciting by adding explosions. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you could have got the point across with sound effects, not the real thing. Download this show on iTunes or at simplisticreviews.blogspot.com. I'm sure your insurance company will cover that. No, they won't. No, they probably won't. This podcast is a proud member of the Lamb Podcasting Network. Find the network at largeassmovieblogs.com. Okay, let's talk about blood sport. For centuries, the Society of the Black Dragon has sanctioned an ancient rite of combat known as the Kumite. <laughs> Open only to the world's most beautiful warriors. It has never been won by a Westerner. You are not Japanese. I can do it. Now, for the first time, the true story of America's <laughs> super agent, Frank Brooks, can be revealed. Uncle Sam can't afford to let you get hurt. I'm going to Hong Kong. Frank is going to fight in the Kumite, and we're here to stop him. An awesome human weapon. That hurts me just looking at it. Who infiltrates the Chinese underworld. I did not come this far to stop now. Take him. To enter a forbidden competition. Why don't you just get me in? Strict rules. No press. You're telling me you never break rules? Where every fighting style. <laughs> every worthy opponent. Every deadly technique. I... Clash in savage combat. Time to separate the men from the boys. I... And only one will triumph. Now I will break you. I... International martial arts sensation Jean Claude Van Damme. And Blood Sport. The true story of the ultimate champion. The plot. Frank. Uh, Dukes, an American martial artist serving in the military, decides to leave the army to compete in a martial arts tournament in Hong Kong where fights to the death can occur. The director, Newt Arnold, uh, the actors, Jean-Claude Van Damme, Donald Gibb, uh, Leah Ayers, and uh, uh, a lot of other people. Uh, Hermano, uh, before we get into it, why don't you remind us why you chose this movie as your second time watcher's pick? Well, it's very obvious now that you've seen it, Tim, but uh, I'll explain. Uh, so as a kid, I had a dream that one day... <laughs> you had a dream. I love it. I, I had a dream that one day I would, uh, I would break into someone's house and uh, they would turn out to be a, a Japanese sensei. Uh, they would be totally cool with me breaking into their house and uh, you know train me to fight in a secret underground martial arts tournament. <laughs> That's always been my dream. It's, you know, after breaking into so many houses, it never happened. All I did was go to jail. What kind of, uh, a, what, <laughs> what kind of a deal? Uh, but, I mean, all jokery aside, I mean, it's awesome. I, I mean, Canon, before I knew what Canon was, I they had such a hold on me when I was a kid. <laughs> like, I've already brought another one uh, over the top. I was a huge fan of, you know, also by, done by Canon. I, I watched all their ninja films. Uh, they had a quality. I mean, they, obviously, they're not good films. Now that you're an adult, you can really look back and be like, wow, these films are really terrible. But as a kid, you're, you, when you co- what you come for, like Wally mentioned with the John claude Van Damme films, is like you come for like the, you know, the, the fighting, obviously, the, you know, the different techniques. I was really especially a fan of like all the different types of fighters coming together and just seeing which one, you know, style or fighting style would come out on top. Um, I think that for me as a kid was really unique in this film that I hadn't, I think to this point, I hadn't really seen anything like that. You know, it was usually like a, a ninja against another ninja, you know, it, you know, it's just the same thing. Like they're just fighting against each other. Who's going to come out on top, whatever. Like in this film, you just got like all these different guys like, from all different walks of life coming together, this like, secret underground tournament. And it's just like really captured my imagination. So, uh, and it was like, I was like 12, I think when this came out. So I was like the perfect age to watch it. So yeah, I've always been a huge fan, uh, and especially um, in like the later years, I've, I stuck with John Claude Van Damme. I watched a lot of his films in the theaters. Uh, I think Kickboxer, Lionheart, Double Impact, A Hard Target. <laughs> I even saw some of the bad ones, like the one he did with um, uh, was it Dennis Rodman or whatever? I oh, forgot yeah. what that one's called. Oof. But um, yeah, I was I was always a, a big fan of J, uh, JVCD. 
Uh, Wally, what was your history with this movie, and what did you think of this revisit? Uh, so I remember like watching this like late night back in the day. It was on it was on like ran on cable a bunch of times. It was on the the free HBO, um, you know, trials that they would give out periodically, and I enjoyed it. I mean, I love martial arts movies like. Uh, Harmano in the ZA and A segment talked about one of my favorites in the Return to the Three Six Chamber, um, and so you know when this came out, I think I, I I think this first saw this actually at the start of like the Jean Claude Van Damme like wave in the '90s, like he was everywhere. Like every movie, it seemed like every movie came out for like several years was a Jean Claude Van Damme movie. Um, so I I remember digging it as you know as a as a strapping young man. And watching it on, on, on second, there's, it's hard not to see the comedy in it um, because of just, like, everyone knowing about this super secret underground, you know, fight. <laughs> everyone knows. <laughs> so, supposed to be super secret. And they're like, oh, you're in the Kumite. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. It's, and the weird thing is, like, it almost looks like by the crowd that there's admission to this. Right. Yes. Like you can buy a ticket. They sell tickets. Yes. And and come to come to the Kumite. But uh, I still was not disappointed in rewatching it. Like um, it also shows. I mean, one thing that this does highlight this this movie does highlight it does show. Um, I mean, this is early early Jean Claude. Um, you know, he doesn't. You know, English is not his first language, um, and certainly he's you know not really an actor. Um, for at this at this point in time, because it shows like in later scenes where he's trying to facially act and it it looks silly. Um, well, it's even sillier but, in uh, slow mo. It is. <laughs> but what do I get out of it? I get Jean Claude Van Damme doing spin kicks, doing split kicks, doing all sorts of Jean Claude Van Damme cool things. So I'm a happy guy. <laughs> uh, yeah. So this was a first time watch for me. I I, I am almost completely opposite of Hermano in which these types of films were, were just passed me by. I, I had no interest. I had no in on these types of movies. Uh, I was more geared towards science fiction type uh, of stuff, you know, starting with Star Trek and going from there. Uh, so yeah, uh, it, look, <laughs> is this movie entertaining? Absolutely. Jean-Claude Van Damme, is an absolute physical specimen. Absolutely. How anyone can look and move so good is beyond me. He's the muscles from Brussels. Surely he must have stood in front of mirrors most of the day admiring himself. How can you not? I would. Yes, exactly. (laughs) I'd get nothing done. (laughs) Uh, We we need to talk about the soundtrack. We need to talk about the song. The the song. Guys, I'm listening to the song and I'm like, this is really good. And I'm like, this is so familiar. And I'm like, Stan Bush? What? The Touch? <laughs> the same guy that sings The Touch? No wonder this uh, uh, this song uh, tickled me in such a way because Fight to Survive is an all-timer in my mind now, as it should be. Uh, I, it, it's, it's an amazing, amazing song. I do love how in the first 15 ish minutes is made up almost entirely of flashbacks that keep cutting to Van Damme's face as he's gazing at the sword that brought on the memories. (laughs) It's, uh, you know, all I kept wondering was like, how long is he standing there staring into space? Want to, want to guess how long guys, how long do you think? You think he's there Uh, for half a day thinking about this? Just standing there? Maybe. I mean, I, I just picture like the, uh, is like okay now stare into the camera and he just like starts and he just like okay you can stop he's just still staring (laughs) (laughs) Uh, so when he goes to meet his former master who is on his deathbed by the way uh we we never returned to him after that did he die does he get better what happened to him we don't know oh i want to know i should know we should know well i mean are we doing spoilers for this for this movie yes absolutely no holds barred okay you know, when you talk about the secret, secret, uh, super secret turban, you, you, yeah, there's so many people in the stands. I, I was expecting like uh, merchandise to be being sold. You know, <laughs> like somebody going about with foam fingers and and hot dogs or something. I like that. fought in the Kumite, and all I got was a stupid T-shirt. <laughs> we need to talk about Frank and and Jackson and how much they bond. You know what? This this movie, 
this movie, you know, their, their bond is so quick and they confess their love to each other at the end of the movie that I begin to think, you know what, this movie has some sexual undertones and is maybe more about uh, male bonding than actual fighting. Uh, you know, I'll tell you this. Um, and it wasn't, it's probably not until this, like this recent watch. It's been, it's been a while since I've actually seen Bloodsport. Um, I probably haven't seen this movie in its entirety probably since like my early to mid 20s, maybe. So it's been a while since I've seen it. Um, and I will tell you, it, it, it was mind blowing. Now, you know, sitting there rewatching it now, you know, fresh eyes and haven't seen it in a bit. Um, that Donald Gibb is not Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Every single time prior to this, I would see that. That's exactly who I thought. He of. certainly looks like it. It, it, it. Oh, and I was like, oh, so I'm like watching and I'm like, oh, no, that, that's not him. That's not Jim Duggan. That's Donald Gibb. I'm like, but like, the, uh, the way they made him look, they made him look like Hacksaw Jim Duggan. He like, really does. Fierce. Yeah, but it's, it's like for the longest time, I thought it was him in that movie. It's Ogre from Revenge of the Nerds. It is. <laughs> uh, th- there, this movie, you know, it's like Die Hard, where it's it's actually about the bond between John McClane and uh, and Sergeant Al Powell. Th- this movie is actually about uh, Frank and Jackson. Uh, confessing their love for one another at the end. Exactly. Um, overall, this movie is pretty standard fare when it comes to martial arts tournaments films. You know, yes, Van Damme, Bolo Young, and uh, and Donald Gibb are the highlights in this. Um, but otherwise, it, the, like you said, Hermano, it, it's a canon film. It's not particularly great. It's, it, it's, it's almost adequately put together. You know, there is a story. There, it, although... You know, there there are just so many elements. Like, I I want a little bit more. Like, okay, his he's leaving, he's 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 going AWOL. He's risking his career, I guess, his li- livelihood, um, to to go avenge the death of a friend, I believe, uh, and his brother in arms. His brother in arms. Okay, but we never really get a sense as to who this brother in arms is and why he was so connected to him. Um, and, and then it never really comes into play later on in the film because it's more about, uh, seeking vengeance for, uh, Jackson being incapacitated. It, it's just adequate enough to make you keep going. It, it, it's never boring. It's, it's fun. It, it's a fun movie, but it's, 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 uh, it's typical canon. I think it's typical canon. Hermano, when, when was the last time you saw this, uh, before this rewatch? Oh, I, I even told Mia it, it'd probably been a few years since I'd seen it, but I've probably seen this film at least 50 times. <laughs> wow. uh, when I watched it, probably most of it that when I was a kid. But um, yeah, I, I had I almost didn't I almost thought about not watching it because I knew it that well. <laughs> um, so like you guys are saying about the canon stuff, like there is a charm to these films when they're not like perfectly polished films. Yeah, you know, it's like there's with, there's it's made with a certain. We, we're going to do this, and this is all we're going to do. We just got to find a way to make a story that makes this all make sense somehow. <laughs> yeah, it's like a barely there story. They really feel like they're skipping steps. Like you said, like they don't come back to the sensei. Um, the the kid who dies, you never see him die. You just hear he died. <laughs> like, uh, you know, things like that. Uh, there's like, Canon was notorious for this too. And I remember picking up on this even as a kid, like notorious for their overdubs. Like, in post just completely overdubbing people's voices and being very obvious about it in the films. Um, very bad musical choices, like the chasing music in this film <laughs> is bananas. Bananas. Um, you know, aside from the chasing also being bananas. Um, but just a lot of weird little quirky things like that that I think gives it a real charm. Like, I've always kind of appreciated that about these films. Like, you, you know what you're getting with them once you've seen a few. And, you know, you know right away if you're going to be into it or not like in i've always kind of been into it you know like they're kind of tied into my childhood i watched a lot of these films like i was into a lot of these like action films you know i was a little i was a little boy (laughs) you know i I liked watching all these big buff dudes like you know fight each other and kick each other in the face and (laughs) you know the good guy ultimately triumphs and blah 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 you know so yeah i I mean it was just an easy thing for me and it was really fun watching it again you know i I feel like each time i watch it it just kind of it's like one of those nostalgia trips, you know, you just kind of takes you back to where you were and as a kid and how you used to be into all these films and stuff like that. And yeah, I still enjoy it, man. It's one of those films that I can honestly say, like, you know, I know we do this second time watches to kind of reevaluate, 
you know the films from my childhood and stuff like that but i feel like this one's like bulletproof for me like there's almost not a single bad thing i could say about it uh yeah i i just want to go back to bolo young because he is such he's amazing in this he is so he's so good in this in terms of what he's asked to do and what he does it's just he and, and also because he he has a very familiar face and physique of course his body is is just just a wall of muscle and and his it's just always a, he's always a nice screen presence whenever he comes on, you know, no matter how little or big his role is. His facial acting is what sells him as a villain in this mm. uh, because he's not really the villain, believe it or not. Like, I don't, I don't consider him to be the villain. I consider him to be the final obstacle, but he's not a villain because Jackson, it calls him out like a, <laughs> in that first fight. He's like, you, I'm coming for you. <laughs> and like Bobo Young's expression is like, fuck did I do? <laughs> what is this guy? <laughs> I have no idea who you are. Just like his, like that smirk and like that kind of like, is this guy serious? And then, you know, when he's like in like crazy Bolo Young mode and he's beating the shit out of everybody, like he's got like, he's terrifying. Terrifying. Like even if he wasn't like this like mad jack, high kicking guy, like his his look would be would would be like it would freeze you in your tracks if you like if you, you ran up and he just like gave you like that like that bolo young like let's do this like face you would you would stop moving you'd freeze um and i i i'm just like just so impressed with his his uh his facial acting and just like his mannerisms throughout this because he doesn't get a lot of screen time overall in terms of all in terms of minutes um but what he does what the time he does get he maximizes it to its full extent. I, I agree. I agree. I also forgot that Bolo Young is in a Cynthia Rothrock film from 1991 called Tiger Claws, which you can mm-hmm. watch on uh, watch on Prime right now, and uh, I recommend it because uh, it's Cynthia Rothrock. Uh, back to Bloodsport. Uh, what else? What else? Uh, what else do you want to uh, mention, Hermano? What, what What have we not touched on yet? Oh, let me think here. Um, well, I guess to talk. Uh, the real life aspect to the film. Uh, oh, I didn't yes, find this out two years later. <laughs> uh, are you familiar, Tim, with uh, the Frank Dukes uh, real life person? Uh, well, yeah. After reading the IMDb uh, a trivia, uh, after I saw the end credits of this movie, um, <laughs> I, which I had no idea, I I, I finished the movie and uh, the the title screen pops up and I'm like, oh, okay. Is it based on a true story? Great. Fantastic. Well, the little I did that I know, I go to the IMDb trivia and I'm like, oh, okay then. Wow. Complete fabrication. <laughs> yeah, you know, seeing that little title text thing at the end as a kid, you're like, Frank Dukes, this guy must be the greatest fighter in the history of the world. <laughs> and you're just like so idolizing him like, oh my god, he won 329 matches in a row? <laughs> Holy shit. Like, <laughs> He knocked a guy out in point twelfth of a one like a second, like wow. <laughs> uh, and and <laughs> it's so funny. You could find so many stories about this guy, like about all these people calling him out as like a total fraud, and like he just made all this shit up. There's no such thing as the Kumite, and blah blah blah. It makes for a great story. I mean, the guy's clearly great at you know these fictional stories. Sure. But I mean, I think he way, way piles it on too much. I mean, it, the absurdity of some of the the stats at the end is like insane. Right. Yeah. Like absolutely insane. But you know who's legit? Um, who's got like legit like championship stats? JCVD himself. The guy was like championship like like UFC and higher like level like kickboxing. Like he was, he was like winning tournaments and like setting records and stuff like that before he got into acting. He's more legit than the guy he's playing in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> I we we need to talk about uh, Jean Claude Van Damme's IMDb photo and this epic mullet. This mullet, which is not in Bloodsport, but is I just I'm staring at this photo and it's just it's gorgeous. It, it is it is like. The perfect definition that's his, of that's his hard target mullet. It's it's a perfect definition of mullet. You look up mullet in the dictionary, and this picture should be in it because it's 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 gorgeous. It's beautiful. It's 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 a sculpture. It's amazing, just like his body. It's his body. Uh, oh, let's talk uh, about the clothes that he's wearing in this movie. I, I want Van Damme's body. 
Uh, yeah who doesn't like uh, let's talk about the clothes that he's wearing in this movie and how they fit because of his physique perfectly (laughs) they they fit well no because of the style of the time you know there's a lot of loose fit and and how they're tucked in the shirts are tucked in but then i love i love this scene where he's clearly posing for the camera waiting for the cue to lift his his boxer briefs or just his briefs up so that you see a brief glimpse of his ass and it's it's this perfect yes. perfectly his underwear on. Yes, this perfectly sculpted ass and these these underwear that just molds right to his skin and it's amazing. I knew I knew it was in the movie somewhere. It's like I know there's a a, a gratuitous um a gratuitous JCVD butch. Oh there it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's the level of, of, of squats you'd have to work at to be able to get something like that. Unbelievable. And Split. And splits. I mean, no, oh my I mean, God, the splits. Without strength. How, how does any human uh, do that? Well, he is no human. He is no ordinary human, obviously. Nope. Uh, because but... in the expendables, guess who still has it? That's John Claude Van Damme. That's true. Still has it. True. 30 years later, he still has it. <laughs> still has it. And he's in, like, in the movie, I was like, I wanted more, I wanted more villain. Uh, Hermano, have you, did you ever try to do the splits uh, that he did in this movie? You know, when I was a kid, I tried really hard, but I could never get there. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Uh, I, I just, do I don't know. Split, believe it or not. I think my balls are too big. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what's man. pissing me off, though? I'm on the Jean-Claude Van Damme um, IMDb thing, and you know the known for? Usually, they, I think they list it in order of the movie he's most known for, and Bloodsport is only third. He's... It, they have double impact and double team listed before yeah, it. I'm like, are you yeah, fucking snake, kidding me? That, that snake scene, man, sells it. If I think John Claude Van Damme, the, the first movie that comes to mind for me is Bloodsport. Like, absolutely. And maybe next, I, I don't think double impact or double team would even come in the top 10. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's crazy. Like, they, maybe double impact, definitely not double team. Double team is trash. But, like, I, I don't know, man. I, I'm thinking, like, Bloodsport, Hard Target, you know, Kickboxer fucking Lionheart before all of those like it's crazy but uh yeah man I'm glad you liked it Tim I, I was kind of on the fence I was like you know he's been kind of down on a lot of the stuff I've brought like I feel like he's just not into this a lot of the films I liked as a kid so I'm glad you kind of enjoyed it yeah I, I, I still rate it relatively you know middling because of you know the final product it, it's a very entertaining film it's a very watchable film you know it's it's brief it's uh it's economical in terms of uh you know progression and all that kind of stuff and and uh and there's a lot of stuff just to awe at like forrest whitaker shows up as some sort of fbi agent or whatever or uh, yeah i completely forgot he was doing this i was like oh hey <laughs> yeah and... and his eyes are normal <laughs> oh jeez. oh no wow. wally don't go there <laughs> wow. wow well they are <laughs> this is shortly after um what is it, Fast Times? Well, Fast Times right. was in 81, I think it was. Uh, oh, so. was it that early? I was thinking it was like 85 or something. No, no. Oh, by the wow. way, did you know that Fast Times is is uh, coming to the Criterion Collection? Wow. Yeah, it's being released uh, next month, I believe, and uh, I can't wait. Uh, and it, Oh, Fast Times Criterion is also uh, including the the TV version of the film. Do you remember the TV edit? Which is how I saw it. Do you guys, re- you guys remember USA Up All Night, I'm sure? Uh, I I I've interacted with Rhonda Shear a few times on Twitter, but yes, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, that was my introduction uh, to Fast Times Original on High because it was a uh, Christmas weekend, and they decided to play two good movies instead of the real crappy ones that they usually played. And um, and one of those movies was Fast Times Original on High, and that was my introduction to that movie, which was the TV edit. And and on subsequent viewings, I, cause I had bought the DVD. I'm like, there's a lot of stuff on here. I don't remember. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, and sure enough, I, I come to learn, Oh, there were two different edits of this movie. Cool. I wonder if I'll ever be able to see this TV edit again. Sure enough. Criterion's going to release it. That's amazing. Nice. Yes. So yeah. Tim, I, I'm not sure if you're aware, but what? do you know that blood sport was kind of has a pseudo remake? Really? You know, it's funny. Cause I was thinking that this would be a great film to remake, to be honest with you. Well, it kind of did. I don't know if Wally remembers it. For about uh, not even ten years later, I want to say uh, in '96 it came out. I just looked it up. Um, the Quest. Have you ever heard of the Quest? Hmm. I did not get a chance to watch the Quest. I wanted to watch it behind this one because I remember when the when the trailer came out for the Quest, I had lost my shit. I was like, "This is what I want." 
the, the, <laughs> the trailer made it look great. And I remember going to see the quest and being highly disappointed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely a more polished film. It's definitely got a bigger budget. But again, you lose that canon charm. It's it's because it's a more competently made film. It, it, Whoa, it's directed by Jean-Claude Van Damme? Yes. Huh. Look at the writer. Yeah, Frank Dukes. <laughs> Exactly. They basically took Bloodsport, the entire concept of Bloodsport, and basically just turned it into a, a film set in, I think, the 20s. Roger Moore? Like James Roger Remar? Moore's in it. What the yep. hell? It's great, man. I mean, great in a, in a not, it's somewhere in between a great film and Bloodsport. <laughs> oh, it's available on Tubi TV and you can watch it for free. Um, yeah, I, I recommend you check it out. I think, you know, cinematography, it's got everything going for it that Bloodsport doesn't. But like I said, the, the charm factor of like these weird, quirky things that, you know, qualities the the Bloodsport has, like the quest doesn't. Like it just feels like a more competently made film with a bigger budget behind it that just is not good. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, I, I was thinking about remakes and and how... And who could remake this film? And, you know, all the obvious people, of course. But I, I was thinking somebody like Jeremy Saulnier, you know, Blue Ruin, uh, would be a good person to remake Bloodsport. Uh, I, I think he has the right touch to get into the, the grittiness. I think, that, I think a Jeremy Saulnier Bloodsport would be pretty fucking amazing, actually. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. Anything Anything else to mention before we get into grades? We good? Um, you know... I always thought at the end of the movie, like for some reason I have this Mandela effect that huh. Jackson doesn't live at oh. the end. <laughs> and it just feels like they just kind of reworked it at the end. Like, oh, the audience don't like the fact that Jackson died. No, 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 no. We got we to gotta change the ending. Right. And so it's like everyone's like, beep, beep. It's like, he'll be fine in a week. <laughs> I'm like, in a week? <laughs> like, it legit looked like he was dead. <laughs> like, like, Bolo, like, stomped on his fucking head. And like, I, I thought he killed him. Yeah, I thought he did but no, too. Here he is, drinking beer and ready to 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 get up there and kick butt again. And go, okay, yeah. And yell, nerds. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I I just want to feel that like they they missed the they missed the target. They should have had like that. Um, oh, I'm the, I'm blanking on the name of the video game now. Um, oh, the Kung Fu one. That, pit, pit, not, not Pit Fighter. Uh, Streets of is it Streets of Rage or City of Fury? Oh yeah, okay. But like one one of the characters is like a it looks like Jackson is like the mayor named Hagger, and there's like another like kicking guy and another like kung fu guy, <laughs> and it's like a beat 'em up <laughs> through nice. like the city streets. Nice, nice. I I, ju- I just want to make one final mention of Jean Claude Van Damme's body in this. Dear God, wow, just wow. Uh, all right, grades. Uh, Wally, what would you give in this as a as a kid and now as an adult? All right, as a kid, it would give, it'd be an A fuck plus because this was like my first exposure to like Jean Claude Van Damme and seeing all these cool martial arts styles. So that would be an A fuck plus as a uh, as a young as a young teenager. Uh, as a grown ass man, watch this movie again. It is a solid A. I think that I again, like you know, I, I said it earlier. I'm, like, I'm not coming. I'm not coming for the dialogue. I'm not coming for depth. I'm coming for Jean Claude kicking people in the face. <laughs> and boy, do I get. Oh, and as a side note. It's also the same movie that taught me how to do. I figured out how to do the coin steal, which oh. I made. I made loot in in high school. Nice, <laughs> nice. <laughs> I so as a kid, like I said, I, I wouldn't have been geared towards these movies. It would have been like a C C plus movie, maybe like a C movie uh, as a kid. As an adult, it's a B minus movie. It's fun. It's uh, it's it's a good time. It's enjoyable, uh, and uh, I, I I might watch it again, maybe in twenty years, something like that. I don't know, uh, Hermano. I just want to say now that we've been on the the journey of this review and we've really, you know, bonded as males, <laughs> anytime, anywhere you need me, guys, I'm there. Oh, oh, that's nice. You're welcome. Mm-hmm. It's also the Jackson reference from the end. Nice. <laughs> um, look, man, A plus when I was a kid. Still an A plus as an adult. This movie rules. Uh, so our next second time watchers will be in a couple of months, and it's uh, Wally's choice. Uh, what have you decided on, Wally? Uh, we are going with Muppets Take Manhattan from 1984, directed by Jim Henson and Frank Oz. Why? Why? Uh, this. All right. So it is no secret that I am a lover of all things Muppets. I am a lover of all things Jim Henson. Um, and part of my backstory that I like to tell people is that I was accepted. Uh, to the Creature Factory uh, years ago, and I passed on the opportunity like an idiot. Were you accepted um, as a creature? 
as a creature creator. Hmm. Um, they weren't going to. So they weren't going to use you as a mold. The, 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 what was that? They weren't going to use you as a mold. They could. I mean, I'd love to be a Muppet. Um, I, and, and technically, I am a Muppet yeah, already. You are a Muppet. Um, there's a Walter in, yeah. in the Muppet verse. Um, <laughs> and my big brother is Jason Siegel. Uh, but I love all things Muppets. Um, I, I think Jim Jim Henson. Yeah, I you know I was very sad when I you know when he passed because uh, my formative years as a kid was you know growing up watching Sesame Street and you know watching things like on on you know PBS that like how to get into puppetry and I have puppets um, at home that I practice with um, to get. You know, just because I enjoy the I enjoy the medium, um, and so this is one of those movies that really like just really made that spark take off when I was a kid. Um, Kermit and his friends go to New York City and get their musical on Broadway, only to find it's more difficult task than they anticipated. This is the best movie in the Muppet trilogy because uh, you have the Muppets movie, you have the Muppets Take Manhattan, you have the Great Muppet Cape, and I've of the three movies, this one is far and away the best put together one. Um, it introduces my my favorite characters, which also sparked it to the you know to the field that I work in as a professional. Now you have Bill, Gill, and Jill, <laughs> the advertising frogs, <laughs> who are fantastic, um, and just some of some of my favorite lines are in this movie too. Like when they're talking about you know uh, you know jobs, and there's a gag <laughs> where they question who's going to come next, and then that thing shows up, and they get indignant about it. It's great. Uh, and I I have it on DVD. Uh, I would love to be able to get this on Blu-ray. I'm going to get this as a Criterion, if you're out there. <laughs> criterion. Uh, I, want, I want this as a Criterion. I want the Muppet Trilogy as a Criterion, as a criterion set. Mm-hmm. I will buy that in a heartbeat. Um, and I've got several uh, several seasons of The Muppet Show on DVD as well, just because I just love all things. I have a Jim Henson uh, uh, Funko Pop. Uh, when it was released, I made sure to go out and get it. All right, one. all right, all right. Save, save, save it for the episode. So, <laughs> This is my pick. Uh, is what I'm saying for many reasons. I could go on and <laughs> yeah, I, I know you can. Um, yeah, th- this. Uh, so the Muppet Show was something that I watched when I was younger, but for some reason the movies themselves uh, weren't uh, anything that I that I caught up with. So I, I think I have seen most or at least portions of the Muppets Take Manhattan. I'm not sure I've actually seen the whole movie. Uh, so uh, yeah, th- th- this will be an interesting. Uh, interesting viewing for me what about you hermano yeah i was a fan as a kid it wasn't like top tier for me i was more into like cartoons over like the puppets but i did you know i do i do have a fond place in my heart for you know the muppets and stuff like that and and kind of warms my heart too to see that my kids have gotten into the some of the more recent muppets movies so i haven't shown them some of the old stuff that, um yeah but I, I think they'll get into that too so yeah i'm looking forward to seeing it nice uh, all right, that does it for this episode of the First Time Watchers podcast. Donate via patreon.com slash first time watchers or buy stuff at zazzle.com slash first time watchers. You can talk to us on Twitter at 1st time watchers on Twitter. Or write to us at our email, first time watchers at gmail.com. Uh, please leave a review for us on Apple Podcasts and Stitcher. Uh, we love feedback. If you have any suggestions of movies for us to watch, please send a tweet or an email. Speaking of suggestions, let's recommend a movie. I will go first. Um, first up, uh, I just want to throw a shout out to 2008's JCVD. Uh, who knew this guy could act, you know, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it, it was, it was, uh, quite uh, surprising to when I finally caught up with this. Um, when did I, when did I watch this? Uh, I watched it uh, back to 2017. Um, and it's, uh, it's kind of like a, I don't know, action comedy Thing where he gets involved in a bank robbery with hostages, uh, and and reflects about his life during during this, and it's uh, kind of like an existential, I don't know, uh, confessional, if you will. He he's very uh, reflective of his his self and uh, his career, and uh, I think it, it ends in a really really interesting monologue uh, uh, direct to the camera, and you can watch it right now on Prime. Uh, so that's a uh, JCVD from 2008. Walter. All right, we talk about kicking face and and martial arts and awesome fight scenes. Well, I'm gonna go with a movie that I'm sure that everybody has seen right now at this point. And if you haven't, fuck are you waiting for? Uh, from 2011, directed by Gareth Evans, featuring the God amongst men, Equal Weiss, in the raid. 
uh, I believe Tim and I went to go see this together. All three of us. All three of us. And I have never been just jaw agape at a movie in some time. But watching what these guys are doing, I'm just like, holy fucking smokes. <laughs> like, this is this is crack. Just keep giving me this. Yep, 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 yep. I want more of it, want more of it. Um if you if you like if you like martial arts movies, man, like you're not gonna like, this is a this is a masterpiece in terms of martial arts movies, man. Um, so yeah, absolutely, I would I would recommend the raid to anybody who's into that uh, particular genre. Hermano. Okay, so I don't know if you guys know this, but John Claude Van Damme has been in many many films featuring uh, him entering uh, some sort of secret underground fighting tournament. We just watched Bloodsport, Kickboxer, also The Quest. And maybe a lesser known one that now apparently goes by a different title, but I'm going to use the original title from 1990, just a few years after Bloodsport. He made another underground fighting tournament movie called Lionheart. Yes. A French soldier begins participating in underground street fights in order to make money for his brother's family. So tell, stop me if this sounds familiar, Tim. Uh, he leaves the military. He <laughs> EWALs himself uh, to join to go fight in an underground fighting tournament. Weird. <laughs> Uh, I mean, if it works, works, then go back to the well. Yeah, this one's a little different. It's kind of got the um, kind of a, a, a classist type thing to it, where uh, the tournaments are run by the, like the, like the rich to watch, like you know, people that are struggling to make money, or you know, homeless people, or like you know, it's not just them, but like it, there's there's a there's a slant to that. Um, but it's pretty solid. You know, it's it's kind of a lesser known one. It, it, um, kind of gets lost in his filmography, I think. But I, I kind of appreciate it. I remember seeing it in the theater. It was one of the, my earliest <laughs> theater viewings. And um, yeah, I came out as a fan. You know, it, it's it's the, the tried and true formula of uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme's career, but it's pretty solid overall. So if you're a Jean-Claude Van Damme fan and you haven't, uh, fan and you haven't seen it, I would recommend Lionheart from 1990. Very good. All right. Stay tuned for our next episode. We'll have a double review of the new Mortal Kombat, as well as a list of shame for Hermano, Stanley Kubrick's Dr. Strangelove. Yeah, that's the first time watch this podcast because we like to watch. I've worked hard Kumate, Kumate. You know, there's only one song choice for this week. <laughs> there's only one song choice. My arm was slightly sore the next day, just the, the area where I got the, the jab, and uh, I hear it's uh, pretty worse uh, on the second dose. Yeah. I'm going, my dad, I took my dad uh, this past Saturday to get his first shot at the, one of the mass vaccination sites near us, and, uh, it's they have it at an old Circuit City. Oh yeah. Uh, I don't know if I told you that. Like usually the Circuit City's it, the building has been standing there since you know Circuit City's not around anymore. They only use it now for uh, Spirit Halloweens uh, during Halloween time. Right. And I hadn't been there, you know, uh, in a while since like October. Yeah, we go every once in a while to Spirit Halloween, but not all the time. 
and it was weird how they had it set up like it it almost didn't look like like a circus city or the spirit halloween it's like they they almost had it looking like some sort of makeshift like tent hospital from mash or something wow but it was it was easy in and out like my dad was his appointment was at one we were out of there by like 120 they and that's yeah. with they made him sit down for like 15 minutes afterwards right. yeah yes. make sure he, he ex- the shot was all good and all that yeah same same here and uh i yeah mine mine was at a place that i don't know it, it used to be some bank or business facility or whatever and it, like the national guard was there and there were like a couple of guard trucks uh uh, along fencing at the entrance and then uh, like a bunch of uh, postings, you know, like a guy asking you questions when y- you, you walk in and then the next guy uh, uh, giving you hand sanitizer and then the next guy signing you in and the next guy, you know, confirming you're signing in and then the next guy, you know, telling you where to wait in line and then get the jab. So, yeah. You get, you get hand sanitizer? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I I just got a hand job. They told me it was all part of the part of the vaccination process. I nice. feel I don't know if I either got something good or something bad. Oh. Yeah, I think you were vaccinating them if you gave them if they gave you a hand job. Oh, yes, yes, they yes, did yes. ask for a shot. Yes, yes, different kind of shot, Wally. Sorry, but they looked at me weird when I handed them my eight by ten glossy. 